everyone, welcome to my channel. Do you remember the Chevrolet K10, this vehicle here? Back in the 70s and 80s, this vehicle drove around my neighborhood quite a bit. And I recall it because a lot of people had a 350 V8 in this thing and it made a really rumbly sound when they would start it up or drive it along the streets. It was a really cool vehicle and a lot of the ones in my neighborhood had this paint scheme on it. So this is a 118 scale RC remote control vehicle of the Chevrolet K10 and it's supposed to be highly detailed. I have never opened this. So I'm gonna open this right here and we'll check it out together. So this vehicle, which is really securely stuck in here, is uh, supposed to have working headlights and all sorts of other cool things. Do I have it upside down? I think I do. There we go. Yeah. So right on the top, it says FMS. That's who makes it. So let me pull the top off. All the vehicles from FMS are usually highly detailed. This is licensed too. So you are paying a little extra for the licensing. And I'll see if I can open it. And uh, there we go. One thing I can already tell I like is is a lot of times when people make RC pickup trucks, they always make the bed too short, but this has got the proper length of bed. Yeah, that's pretty decent. All right, so up in this area would be your remote control. Let me just take that out because we're gonna need that later. So let's pull this baby out and, oh my God, oh my God, is that ever detailed? Whoa, whoa, whoa. this looks really good. And the rear end, ha, look at that, the bed it actually opens and closes. Well, that's pretty good. I know small things amaze me, but this is very nice. Man, they did a good job on that. Oh, and even the cab is detailed on the interior. That looks just like the cab, the real thing. So what else is in here? Let me just plop that down. What else is in here? We have the battery charger and a metal tool. First thing I notice, we have chrome mirrors and they are mirrors. They are very reflective. I can see, do they move? No, nope, they are stuck in place. You can't move them. The doors do not open on the side. These doors do not open. It almost looks like they do, but they don't. It's so detailed. It looks like they would open, but nope. So once again, I already mentioned the interior is pretty decent. Let me just try this turning. No, sometimes when you turn these wheels, the steering wheel will move as well, but this one, I don't see it moving. At least not now. Maybe when it's powered, it might turn. Looking at the rear, Chevrolet is actually spelt correctly, so you can tell it's licensed, and uh, you do get a nice little license plate at the back. And one thing that's pretty cool is on the license plate, they put stickers as if you registered the vehicle, so you've got 69, 70, 71, and 72. On the front, I can see that the windshield wipers do move, which is a nice touch. I'll just push them back down. The front grille is nicely done done. The headlights, the signal lights are all there. License plate. So let's check underneath. Here we go underneath. You can see it's a very long vehicle and because of that the rear suspension is actually on an angle. I'll show you a close-up of that. You can see it back here. The rear suspension is on an angle just the way the springs are loaded. And that's another thing. There are no oil-filled shocks in this. It is a spring suspension. So when you put it down, see? Boing! And if you drop it, that's spring suspension. That's what you get when you get 118 scale, uh, you know, to cut costs or whatever. They'd put all the money in the detailing and the gearing and the motor and everything else, but the suspension, they just leave it as springs. But when it drives, it looks pretty realistic. So looking at the bottom, I can see that it's a four wheel drive. And I can also see that with the springs, it will be independent of the wheels. There's no solid axle in there. And as well, it does look like a few metal parts. It's hard to tell. I'm touching them to see if they're cold metal, but I can't tell. It does look like the frame is black metal that goes sort of like a truck frame that runs along the whole thing. It looks like it's black metal and then other portions are plastic. Nice job on the tires. The tires are really grippy and good job on the actual rims. Yeah, they look really nice. All right, let's open up the hood. So opening up the hood, I can see inside and just like a lot of these vehicles, I can see the electronics really well and it does not not look like those electronics would be designed to go underwater. They're too exposed. Like they're, yeah, they're too exposed. I would say you can't go underwater. There is a switch to power things on and off. Your battery's in there. I'll show you that in a second. But uh, FMS, the company that makes these, all the vehicles, they say you can drive them out in like, um, drive them through puddles or drive them in the rain, but just don't get the interior soaked. So it should be okay, I would think. So let me pull the battery out. 
Looking at the battery, it is a 7.4 volt, 380 milliamp hour LiPo battery. And that should get you a pretty long run time. I think FMS for most vehicles always says that this battery, if you drive conservatively, you'll get like 30 minutes of runtime. These are not race vehicles. So yeah, if you, if you have the lights on, maybe it will suck up a little bit more power. But if you turn off the lights, drive it conservatively, you can get a long uh, drive time. Now for the remote, it looks like it takes four AAA batteries. So I'll put two in that side and then two in the other. And we should be good to go to power this on and check it out for the very first time. Click that and let's see if this power is on. If I did it correctly, the top should open. And if I go on, these two lights here, they look like little shark eyeballs. They should come on. And that flashing that you see means I have not connected this to the vehicle yet. When they're connected, everything will work. And in the back, you have a very nice control system here. Everything you would need for this vehicle. So let's uh, power it on. All right, batteries inside. Let's see how, oh, there, maybe I should turn it on. Flick the little on switch and here, I'll just show you. As I turn it on, the light should come on for a second. Tell me it's working and there we go. So they shouldn't be flashing anymore because they have a signal from that. And this shouldn't be flashing because it has a signal. There we go, I can steer. So let's put you way back here and let's just see. So you can go crawler mode, nice and slow. Reverse as well. I got backup lights happening here. That's pretty cool. Got some lights going. I do have the lights off, but they're still working. They're just not working in the front. And let's go in full speed mode. Here we go. Give it a run. That's not bad. Full speed backwards. There we go. So let me show you the lights working. All right. So let me just put you over here like that. So you can see it on a bit of an angle. And now, uh, once again, I can turn the steering wheel see the little signal lights working there we go nothing is happening in the rear i can tell you that now it's only in the front and of course you have your speeds you know just turn it sideways so you can see the wheels turning there you go full blast forward full blast reverse and when you go in reverse see how i get lights in the back also works for when you're doing brakes if you're going forward then you go whoa stop you get brake lights so there's my brakes so here we go, spin you around and we'll show you the headlights. To do the headlights, I have to hit the switch here. It's got A and B mode, so I'll put it over in B mode. Boink! There we are, and then it says LED lights right there. So let's see what happens. So should be no lights, and I should be able to get low beams. There we go, that's low beams. Ooh, that's nice. They're nice little yellowy color, just like the real thing from the past. And then I should have high beams. High beams there. And then I should have my, I'm driving with a big load in the back, so I want to put my four ways on. Uh, so I have that. That's pretty sweet. So it looks pretty decent. Uh, no lights are happening in the back. This is all in the front. And then if you hit it again, I just turn everything off. So I do like that a lot. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it outside. It's really dull and rainy. I think we're supposed to get even wet snow happening. And I'll drive this around my backyard and uh, we'll see how it looks. So uh, check that out now.
All right, back to me. I should also mention that inside this entire package, it must have fallen out. I do have the manual and it's got some pretty cool warnings. I love the warnings. They're so large. It says, if you're not using the battery for a long time, please take it out. Don't leave it in the vehicle. And uh, that's pretty good. And then you got another one. It says, I guess people have problems with this. Gently push horizontally toward the window, then open the hood. I guess people, I can't figure out, how could you have difficulty opening that front hood? But I guess some people do, and then you get the instructions here, which explains everything that I just explained to you. It's also got a few of the specs in here, so let me tell you right now. The specs, it says, if you drive this on the ground, you can get 100 meters range with this. So that's plenty far for a 118 scale. Most people who drive RC cars are standing in a parking lot or someplace near them. Everything else is good. It says it can drive in super cold weather all the way down to minus 10 degrees Celsius and way up to like 60 degrees Celsius. So temperature, hot or cold, not an issue. Anything else that I should pass on here? It's all good. It's a 2.4 gigs transmission and that is pretty much it it so what are my final thoughts on this well this is a collector's item for me because i grew up in the era where these vehicles were all over my street i love anything from the past when i grew up that was in my day so this was in my day and yeah i'm gonna keep this one it's really good it's the same as any rc vehicle i have that's highly detailed if it existed in the past or it's something that's like highly prized that I could never afford in real life, then uh, yeah, I like those and I collect them. So this one here is definitely a collector for me. And I love the bed. The bed you can stick. You can put stuff in it because it's a, it's a real bed. It's nice and long. I don't have any small little toys to fit in there, but yeah, that's pretty decent. All right, guys, I'm going to put links below to where you can find this. I believe it's on Amazon. Banggood told me they will have it on Banggood eventually, so I may or may not have a discount code with a link below. FMS should have it on their website because it is an FMS product, but FMS likes to sell a lot of their products on different distributors' websites. So anyways, with all of that said, below this video will be links to where you can find this. Because it's licensed, and because it's highly detailed, and because it's an RC vehicle, you know, the price might be higher than you normally would expect to pay for a toy. So even though it is kind of a toy, but if you're like me and you want to collect them, I'm not going to smash this up. I'll drive it around at decent speeds and not into things. I won't take it over jumps or anything. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions on the vehicle, then by all means, post them below and I will get back to you. Till the next video, get you then. Bye.